Thank you so much. Please do take your seat. Can you work on my mic? I shouldn't shout, please. Greetings once more in the name of Jesus. Are you well this evening? Are you here or you are sleeping or you are coming? You are coming from work. I say, I'm resting. Praise the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord for the time that we are going to have. Um, at the end, we'll have time of prayer. My focus, I did a, a bit of a, a small study today. And I wanted us to talk about, to deal with the, the spirit called the destroyer. Can we go together to the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 and 13. Exodus 12. It says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and, and, and beasts, and against all the, the gods of Egypt, I'll, ex I'll execute judgment. I am the Lord. The next verse, please. Now, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Amen. So, one part that we know is that there are spirits that are sent to cause destruction and pain. When the children of Israel left Canaan to go, 75 of them with Jacob, to go to Egypt, they were given a very nice place to stay. And they experienced all the goodness of what life could give. But then they had challenges. The Bible says they continue to multiply. The Bible says the more they oppress them, the more they multiply. And so Egypt... Pharaoh decided, we are going to make them slaves. We will suppress them and make sure that they don't have much. We did a service. Maybe my year might be wrong. Uh, uh, I think 2010, 2011. We did debt cancellation. Uh, which is a destroyer. The, the spirit in debt to you. Many people in South Africa, every student have debts. Uh, it's the first thing they do. The person, if he gets a job today, if they say you have a job, they'll go and take a loan for the, to go to work. They get a loan today. Say, oh, I got a job. Uh, month end, I'll pay you. So they take 2000 or 3000 And then it becomes a recurring. So when, when flourishing was coming, they saw that they were multiplying, they enslaved them. I will use the example as well back here at home, which is a common place, that people have no place of their own. So the oppression is that the search continues. I listened to one elderly woman, uh, uh, literally a grandmother, very old, I think around 80. She was pleading. I think one of the presidents was doing uh, house to house some few years ago. And the woman says, I was born until now. I've never had a house. I'm soon going to die. Am I going to die homeless? Now, you start to realize that there is a spirit. I, I had a, a visit from Pastor Michael's branches. And I said, you see, the deception that many of us have, specifically South Africans, if you are not South African, you can take it with a pinch of salt. But for many South Africans, we think we are advanced, but we are not. If your mother cannot write, read and write, then you are the first generation of people who can read and write. If you go to the bank, I work for the banks, most of our elderly, they'll use a cross. You know a cross? Or if they can, they use a finger and then now that things are getting better, we are going back to the old nature. The finger now is the proper signature. We go to the bank, but that's how we used to sign. Or we have seen them sign. So I was saying, when you want to see advancement, is that you are the one who went to school. All the people before you went to school, 
Uh, did you go to school? You are the one who have gone to school, but the destroyer is on your life. Your children don't go to school. And you don't care. You are this carefree parent. So you might be able to read and write, and maybe by grace, you even have a college uh, uh, diploma and so forth. And so you realize that it's like the education will end up with you. They'll go back to the same uh, level of literacy. Illiteracy. So I want you to have that understanding. So as a South African, many are homeless. And many will be made homeless because all people are leaving villages coming to town. And so it's a matter of time because people are thinking this is just happening. People come and live. I gave an example of one of my relatives. A tree is growing. The children came to town but never went back to the village. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. So this big, nice house. In my village, people used to pride themselves. You know, face brick. You know face brick? They don't plaster the brick. The brick itself is enough for generations to remain. That's how far the parents have gone. They put the, the, these modern tiles on the house. They passed on. None of the children has come back. So a tree is coming through the roof. Do you understand? I don't think you understand. Poverty, poverty is, a, is a traded spirit. Yeah, struggle is a traded spirit because if you are not able to advance from where you are and possibly you become the only, I think the other disease is that you want to be the only one. So if your children cannot go beyond where you are, then you should know that the destroyer is not far. The, the challenge that you have, and this is why the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. The challenge that you have is that if you want to see the destroyer, when you get old, you'll soon discover that you'll have no care. You'll have what? No care. It looks like, oh, I'll have government mudende. You don't know. Go and ask your grandmother how much is government mudende. Then you realize that this spirit is stalking you. It's behind you, walking slowly. Uh, but it knows it's going to catch up with you. You are the one who opened the gap. You come back. This is even the issue of machonisa. Just machonisa. Let's not talk about the bank. Just machonisa. If you are using machonisa as of now. You know machonisa. When we, where, where I grew up, machonisa is called camela. You know camela? <laughs> the camel that they talk about, they say, when you borrow it, it comes down. It kneels. But it never comes down. So many people are, in, are, are struggling. So the pain and the struggle of our life. So the blood plays a very major significance. When Adam spoiled everything in the book of Genesis chapter 3, the Bible tells us that for God to redeem Adam's life, an animal had to be slaughtered on his behalf. And even uh, to atone for the sin he has committed. So part of the struggle we have, the amount or the level of sin, and sometimes they are, they, we recare. We are the kind of people who recare. In other words, we recover for two months, for two years, five years, ten years, but then, what do they call it? When you go back from your addiction. You relapse. We relapse. We do what? We relapse. I catch myself sometimes biting my nail and I say, hmm, what is the stress? What's going on? Why am I feeling like I'm under pressure? You get it? I've seen people with no nails. I, I have nails, but I've seen people with no nails. They've eaten all of them. Not one. They didn't eat one. Mercy. So when, when Adam, in the book of, of, of Genesis chapter 3, when Adam sinned, God redeemed Adam through the blood of animals. The sad part about it was that 
the sin of Adam was, 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 was a partial. This is why the continuation of coming again. This is why the Bible says part of it as well when we are doing the assurance of salvation, justification, and all the others is to make us to know what Christ has accomplished for us. The Bible says he became a curse that through him the curse cannot come to us. May the Lord have mercy. So my challenge to you is that the blood of Jesus is a sign of life and the acknowledgement of it is good. But if there is no change, there must be a change. There must be what? Yes. Uh, people know verses, but the verses have not affected them. I use the word, may the verse affect my meat. Because when the verse affects my meat, I change the way. Job says, I've made a covenant with my eyes that I will not last after a girl or after a woman. It's a change mind. It's what? It's a change mind. It's a decision the, the person has made. But sometimes you can make that decision. We, we will say make a resolution. But Christ's life, for us to live his life, the, we, we read the book of Romans 12, verse 2, that do not conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Seeing things differently. Seeing things differently and walking in the light of the things that are in Christ. Hallelujah. So the blood of Jesus is supposed to work for us the same way as the blood of the animal that was slaughtered for Adam worked for him to be pardoned. But one thing I want to show you about the blood of Adam was that it was not sufficient to keep uh, the blood of the, the animal. It was not sufficient to keep Adam in the paradise, in the in the garden. Does it come through? I'm saying, after he has done the sacrifice, the sacrifice was not sufficient to keep him in the same place. Adam, his sin kicked him out. Even though he was redeemed, he was not, his life was not taken. He still had this life, but he could not have the life that he had before, which was no sweat which was no thorns, no thistles, which was a, a thoroughfare life. I always say to the children, uh, you are having a thoroughfare life. It's a life, good life, but you are, not, you are not responding well with your parents. So soon, when you reach 25, your parents will tell you, Takata how? Your age mates, they are having their own place. Imagine somebody. Imagine somebody. While, while other people they are still staying together. Mercy. I don't think you are, I don't think I'm coming. I'm talking about a miracle here. You see, when Christ died on the cross, he puts us back in the same place Adam was before the sin. But when 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 we just get our sins forgiven like most of us do and then we continue with our way of life. In other words, nothing has changed. God still cannot provide for us. Yes, your sins are forgiven. You have it in your head knowledge and maybe you confess the sins every day. You confess the scriptures every day. But the reality of it is that the scriptures are not taking effect. There's no transition. There's no change. There's no transformation. There is no renewal of spirit. But to somebody, there is no exchange. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. So, until I transit, Galatians chapter 2.20, until I, I transit from just ordinary life. I will have a standard life. There are certain things I will not stomach. So the, the main intent tonight is that we should transit. We are going to pray, but I want you to make a decision. There are basic small decisions that will help you to move to your next level. 
to look at it and say, what is the choice? What is the decision that I'm making for change to come? And some of the decisions that you are making, you might need somebody to say, help me every day for a season until I come out. Imagine somebody. By the way, it's a recognition that you need help. Until you recognize that you need help, you'll stay where you are. There are many who never see that they need help. So because they don't see they need help, their struggle continues. I was talking to somebody who came to town. I said, why are you, ta- are you in town? We used to have a ministry of sending people back to where they come from. Because people will come here, they get a job, they work for some time, and then they've saved a little bit. And they decide, we are not going back to the village. Or we are not going back from where we come from. So, so they move from one flat. You know, they come to my flat. They go to your flat. You know, have you lived that life before? You know, you hop around until everybody gets tired of you. Or you get tired of yourself because you have not been polite and nice to everybody else. So you, nobody wants to keep you anymore. And by that time, it's too late. You are now on the streets. So I met such people. I will immediately find them and say, buy them a ticket. Take them personally into a bus here by Bosman. I have even bought airlines. Fly. Go, go back home. You are better there than here. Recover yourself. Rescue yourself. Deliver yourself. Hey. Mercy. Are you here? Don't forget John 10, 10. Okay, the verse is there. It says, I've been crucified with Christ. So, the transition from sin is to embrace Christ that it's no longer us who live. So, the, the, the fight we have is to make sure that the life of Christ is seen in us. It says, the life which I now live in the flesh, which is this body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, you start to look at it, the land must respond, the atmosphere must respond, everything must respond. All things in my life must work together. But if that is going to happen, there must be a change in my mind. I must be transformed. Hallelujah. I must be what? I must be renewed. Now, the destroyer, the intent of the destroyer is to to deceive you that things will get better tomorrow. Fake it until. So you fake it, then fake it, then fake it until everything collapses. And by that time, it's too late, it's too far. My My wife tells a story of a book she read at school that... What was the name of the book? That somebody passed the crossroads and couldn't turn back. You forgot the book. Yeah. So, you say somebody was supposed to turn. And so when they are supposed to turn, they don't turn. Do you get it? You are supposed to leave the boyfriend. It's a turning point. It's what? But the boyfriend gives you a pocket money that you have never seen, even when you are working, you can't get the pocket money. This guy is giving you 5000 You get it? So you look like a madam in a true sense. I had a girl like that. He came to church one day. He used to be our member, disappeared for a season. And when she came, she had a small child and she was crying. And I said, what's up? You have not been around. Since you are the only pastor I have, I say, it's not true. <laughs> then she tells me her story that she found this nice guy who took care of her for a number of, of years. And the guy has just disappeared. There's nowhere to be found. Hey. Now she wanted me to take her to the village. Because they don't even know she was pregnant. She even had a child. 
What do you think? What should the pastor do? So I, I, I told the girl, I said, humility will be get into a bus, pack everything, go home and cry. And beg. He says, they cursed me. I have nowhere to go. So I told her, unless you go home, there's, there's nothing I can do for you. That's the only advice I can give. Go and recover yourself. Go so that your parents will cry with you and realize that their curse was vicious. Do you understand? So the transition, the, the journey we have to take is your journey. That's why Adam, he was pardoned, blood was shed, he entered a new dimension of life where he has to work for himself. That's why I say the day you start working is what? Because you are moving from an environment of provision. You are moving from an environment of protection. Hey, it doesn't work. I see you don't, you don't hear. Most children are rebellious, not understanding that grace has been extended towards them. But a day will come because you refuse to learn. Then you will soon have to learn by force. Yeah. And unfortunately, many don't survive. Imagine somebody. This is how you get colonized. They take everything away from you without you noticing it. So the destroyer the Lord, the Bible, he promises the Lord will go ahead of you. May the Lord go ahead of you in the name of Jesus. You see, when the Lord goes ahead of you, I miss your struggle. All of us go through struggle, but I miss your struggle, you move forward. In other words, your struggle advances your cause. In other words, it makes you stronger and a better person. But other people's struggle destroys them. They retreat and go back. And the only words they can have is that in my day, yeah, I used to live at, at some stage in my life. I don't even understand. I, I, I don't remember. Oh, my son was driving me yesterday. When was it? Saturday. So we we're talking. So there was a Mercedes Benz in front of us. You know, he just pulled in front of us. He's a very old man. He should be 20 years plus years. So we talk about it. And he made a statement. says, this is, they call it, I was once rich. But I told him, I said, this guy, if he stands in front of us, what is he going to say? I have a Mercedes Benz. What do you think? I have what? I have a Mercedes Benz. And it's true, it's a Mercedes Benz, even though it's 20 years old. So my, my take, my, my, my quest is that may the Lord go ahead of you. May you notice your own pitfalls. Uh, the road sign says potholes. What does the rule sign say? The responsibility is a driver. My car, we drove from here to Cape Town, came back. I needed to change tires. I changed tires, part of the tires in Bloemfontein, but the other tire I needed to change. So I went to a shop here. So I said, do, because the other shop where we changed the tires, we were stuck on the way from Bloemfontein. So we changed the tires so that we can get back. So they never did the proper realignment. So when I arrived here, I took the car for tire realignment and so forth. And they took two wheels. They showed me what the pothole has done. The two rims were bent. The same car I'm driving, they were bent. They say, yeah, this is the cause your car to shatter, to shake when you're driving. I said, really? Now, I was saying to myself, you want to tell me I didn't see potholes. Now, what we are talking about, I'm saying to you, there are potholes. But it's your life. You can decide. Maybe you are like my car. We can just put you back and mend some wheels. Because they told me, the damage is not bad. You don't need to buy a new one. Just go and fix it. And every time I see pothole, the board, not necessarily pothole on the street, the board, I remember it is my responsibility because it cost me so much the last time. May the Lord go ahead of you. I said, may the Lord go ahead of you. 
the scripture says, if the Lord is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11, 28. He says, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave, nor forsake you. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. Amen. Hebrews 11, 28 says, by faith, they kept the Passover and they sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. Hebrews eleven twenty eight. There is a destroyer. Oh, yeah. was it yesterday when I told you I never take anything first? Yes, I avoid it. Because everything first belongs to God. But most people don't do, maybe they don't know the principle. But here the destroyer, he says, by faith, he kept the Passover. That's why every firstborn belongs to the Lord. Every child that opens the womb belongs to God. And so as a parent, you need to be conscious and aware that all first things belongs to God. All, anything first belongs to God. Hey. So, I was saying the other day, I'm a, I'm a second born who happened to be made the first born. You know, like Jacob. You remember Jacob? Jacob is not the first born. But I happened to be the first born. Mercy. I was saying, oh, thank you, Lord, that I'm saving you. Not out of force. He says, by faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Lest he who destroys the firstborn should touch them. Huh? May the destroyer not touch you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord restore all the years that have been lost in the name of Jesus. The destroyer will not have power over you in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the blood of conquest. The Bible says we are more than conquerors in Christ. It's only through his blood that we become more than conquerors. It's not by our self-righteousness, but it's in the righteousness that Christ has given to us. Hallelujah. Death will not overtake you in the name of Jesus. Psalm 23 verse 4, it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. The valley, you will walk through it. It's not like, oh, I don't want to go there. No, you will go, but you will go through it. Hallelujah. Death will not touch you in the name of Jesus. I said death will not touch you in the name of Jesus. For the staff of the Lord will comfort you in Jesus' name. You will not suffer loss, no shame in the name of Jesus. You will recover all in the name of Jesus. When we did the, the we, we were teaching far, for far too long. And um, we did the dead cancellation.
Then I realized that God had been kind to push me a little bit further than my friends. Okay, this, this is the way. Who have been given a house before? Who has a house? Some people have houses here. Somebody gave you a house you don't own, not rent. It's your house. Who has a car? Oh, there is a hand. You have a house. Okay. You see, she might never know how far advanced everybody is. How, how far she is ahead of all of us. One person in all of us have a house that she can say is my house. Okay. Who has a house that you have taken a loan to pay over time? You can lift up your hands. Okay. How long does it take a mama to, to pay for a house? 20 years. How long? 20 years. 20 years is the same. Do you understand? She's 20, 20 years already, but she's not happy. She's 20 years ahead. Oh, you don't understand. The message will come one day. You will remember one day what I said. The despise that you have, where the destroyer, you have allowed the destroyer to come to undermine what you have. When I said to my cousin, I said to my cousin, I, I know two, three houses that are empty in my village. I said to my cousin, go and, go and ask for the houses. Can I tell you a secret that you don't know? You're going to get title for the house. You know title? Do you know title did? Yeah. Now, if you have been bought a car, today they pay a car for seven years. In other words, you are ahead. If you are as young as our beloved shepherd here, are you shepherd? You'll be shocked. You are seven to ten years ahead of your peers. But those, the children who have cars, they are the most rebellious people. If the parents give them a, a house, give them a car, they don't see it as an advancement. Let me build my... No, no. They allow the destroyer to come. And the destroyer will come as a sign of rebellion. So you never listen to anybody then. Your parents will disappear like all as time allows us. They will return. And then after they return, you have nothing. But if she understood the joy she has, oh, she'll do more than all of us. Because all of us still need to go. I mean, there's only three hands that have houses here. All of us are renting, maybe. Since we, I remember, you, they gave you a land. Your mother gave you a land. Yeah. I remember I went to dedicate it. If you see the houses around the land they gave, it's something. I don't think there is such big houses in your normal village. Huge. Very big. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mercy. Mercy. It's my father in the Lord who's calling, so I can't take the call. Hey. Mercy. I forgot to switch off my phone. Hallelujah. What was I saying? This thing took away my attention. Yes. He will never, he will never understand how far the mother has advanced him. All the houses around, most of the houses around are double story. There was one that was so huge, close to where he, the, his land is. But you see, when you don't understand, the destroyer, you will leave the land to spoil. 
I'm asking somebody. Are you here? I said, the Lord will advance you. <laughs> you see, when the Lord advances you, you do great and mighty things. But you don't have, you, you don't have to show off. Yes, you don't have, you, you don't have to carry it like epaulets, like a military man or a nursing sister. You know what they call them, matron. Is it matron? The one with some epaulets, or even sisters have epaulets. Yeah. Mercy. The destroyer will not overtake you in the name of Jesus. The book of 1 Samuel 30 verse 8. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I, over, shall, shall I pursue? 1 Samuel 30 verse 8. I want to read. I have it here, but I want to, everybody to read with me. Hallelujah. It says, so David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Hallelujah. Let's read the verse for ourselves. One to go. So David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. Surely overtake them. And without fail. But then, what was the secret of David? To pursue, to recover all. What was the secret? He had the devotion. The, the Bible says he inquired. David did what? Inquired. Yes. David inquired. Much of the things I have is by the Spirit. The car I'm driving. I wanted, I wanted the car. My other car, I didn't have a car for some time. What happened to our car? I think something happened to our car. Then I stayed. I bought a small van to drive around. And so I decided I'm going to buy another car. I went to the, to the dealership for the same car. Similar, not same. Similar car. Same standard, everything. So I couldn't afford what they call a full spec car. So I got the second entry level, which was like 900,000 at the time. And I realized this is a test of my faith. Do you, do you get the idea? So they, they did, they prepared the papers and everything. They said, uh, you'll come and sign. I said, I'll come. The day I was supposed to go, I said to the Holy Spirit, I can't afford this car. And you promise you'll give me a car. My heart says, open, open your iPad. I open my iPad. I punch the car I want. And I did search. There was one car in Cape Town, which I got there during the night. But Cape Town is far. Then before 12 o'clock in that day, when I was supposed to go to the dealership to sign, I did another search. My, this car, they've just, somebody has just posted it. Uh, you know Midwood? By Alexander. You know Alexander? Uh, come again? Wood Mid. What did I say? Oh, mercy. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, so I got the car. Now, the amazing part is that the car is full spec. Top of the range. And we go, I take my wife, I say, let's go. We arrive, we look at the car and everything. Hey, I like the car. We say to the guy, we are taking the car, we are signing now. We, we just went down. And then, by the way, the car is 900000 This one was owned by the owner of the dealership. The, the car, the dealership is opposite the golf shop. Uh, they sell all these sports cars, Porsche, top, top range cars. 
He says, no, this, this, the owner was using it for sport with, with the grandchildren. They liked it because of the spec that is in the car. Oh, no problem. So how much is the car? 450. So I said, where do I sign? <laughs> I, sa- I signed and I finished. Yeah. So I realized that, oh, this thing is continuing. God is being gracious. The destroyer cannot touch me. I cannot be paying far more than is necessary. Am I telling somebody? It's an affordable amount. Am I telling somebody? Now, when you overtake, when the Lord makes you to overtake, and this right here, it comes back to the issue of devotion, prayer, seeking the face of God. Uh, I think a good example will be Reverend Lapani. I've, I've given testimony of him before. Reverend Lapani stayed with me, like, where's Pro? Uh, Pro and others, they've been with me. Reverend Lapani stayed in my house for about four years. And I remember we had a conversation one day. I said, ah, don't worry. You will overtake them. <laughs> it was like a joke because when I look at him today, people cannot, if, I, if I'm to tell from where he was and where he is, it's day and night. Do you understand? You will, he says, pursue. You will surely do what? You'll surely overtake. Tell your neighbor, I'm on the first lane. (laughs) Please, please. uh, I'm flashing the lights. Move, 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 move. I'm coming. Do you understand? And then he says, without fail, you'll recover all. So the ability to recover is that there is land to recover. There is peace to recover. I think next week we'll do the, the I, I pray I remember, the, the psychological impact of demo, the, the demonic impact on our psychology. Yeah. Because you come to believe that the abnormal things are normal. And then you fall into the level where you say, it's human rights. Everybody can do it. We can, we can abort. You can change sex. You can. It's a psychological impact of demonic activity in the life of the community. The community is busy transforming, becoming something else. And then later you want to recover and you can't come back. You remember the story I told you of a woman who bent the whole furniture? Take the furniture. She's angry. Bonfire. And the neighbors, they clap. And then three months down the line, she comes back. What do you think? She comes back and says, ah, let's make right. I like you. <laughs> Uh, you like me? No. I know somebody who ill-treated the boyfriend so bad. And the boyfriend fell in love with the friend. And within a few months, married the, the friend. And when he finished, he stayed opposite. <laughs> It's a true story. It's a true story. State opposite. Yeah, diagonal opposite. You become insane. You become insane. You become mad. Every time you come out of the gate. It was yours. You can't have it back. And it's your best, your best friend who have noticed that you have something beautiful. We have noticed that what you have is precious. But do you know what are precious things? No. 
You don't know precious things. So instead of being, instead of over, over, overtaking, instead of recovering all, you become destitute. Yes. Because your breakthrough has just passed you. Yeah, many people in, 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 in Christianity, they are like that. The breakthrough passed them while they are there. Because they are not like David. They don't inquire. They don't pursue God. They will not give themselves fully. I, we, we, I was saying to a young, young, young woman, I said, the fact that you have a boyfriend, you think we don't know. Tell your neighbor, you think we don't. <laughs> so instead, instead of pursuing, overtaking, you are being overtaken because the person who's delaying you is making sure that your time is wasted. Did you know there is a season to marry? That season, the gap closes. You will have to go back to inquire. Otherwise, you are going to join the worship team. Hoping, maybe a brother will see me. They want to take your space, so just be away. They, they just, <laughs> It's a strategy. They, suddenly you have somebody say, no, I want to join the worship team. We take calculator. We take calculator. We start to calculate. Yeah. Mercy. May your marriage may your marriage be recovered in the name of Jesus. Uh, our beloved was traveling in a, in a micro bus coming to Pretoria, coming from home. He said, he said, there was a young woman in the, in the, in the bus. He said, oh, you go to Emmanuel Christian Church? He says, yes. He says, serious? He says, he says, I'm coming to that church. He said, they marry there. <laughs> So I said to the young man, I said, it's true. You should tell her to come to church. But she's coming for wrong reasons. Because she's going to behave like somebody that she's not. And be deceived. Inquire. Pursue. Seek God. Seek ye first. The kingdom. And all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. Our time is up. But my take is that the blood of Jesus erases slavery. You know, there was a time I prayed this prayer that my ancestors own land. Land was free. Even now, from here, Hebron, you can go and ask for land. They'll give it to you. It doesn't matter what language you speak. Did you hear what I said? It doesn't matter what? Yeah. Our people are not tribal at all. You come, you greet, you say to the chief or the, the local authority or the king, Jose, I need a place to stay. They'll say, come to court, come to the court on a specific day. You come to court. They'll ask you, who are you? Most of the time, you need somebody to take you there because if you don't know, somebody doesn't know you, it's going to be a problem. You know, so, but if I go, if I take you now and I, they ask me, what could I am man? I'll tell them which could I come from. They say, oh, we know you, we know you. Okay, how can we help you? I say, I have a friend. He needs to come and stay. He, he asked for a piece of land. He said, ah, because of you, let him come to Kotla. And he will have land. I'm going to somebody. May every slavery upon your life be erased in the name of Jesus.
may every bondage be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Exodus 23, uh, Exodus 12, 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptian. And when he sees the blood on the lentil and on the doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. Hallelujah. And he said, the Egyptians you see, the Lord will pass over the, the door and not allow the destroyer to come unto your houses to strike you. Next verse, please. It's like you are writing it, my brother. Uh, and you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for the years forever. Hallelujah. There is a verse that is missing there. The Egyptian you see, you will see no more. Continue. What verse is it? Verse 13. 14, 13. Chapter 14, verse 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. May the Lord accomplish his salvation upon your life. You see, for you, salvation is going to heaven. But Jesus said, occupy until I come. Hallelujah. He said what? What is to occupy? To take over. To dominate. Occupy until? Occupy until I come. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. Your struggle is over. I said your struggle is over. So don't forget that the, honor, the Lord has done all that needs to be done. The honor is on, on you. This is why we say don't be angry. Change. Many people don't want to change. Somebody wants a great, a great husband, but they don't make themselves a great wife. Somebody wants a great wife, but they don't make themselves what? A great husband. You want to get distinctions. Huh? But during the day you don't read. Did you know that the best time for a student to read is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m.? Most students don't read that time. Let's not ask people to lift up their hands, but to find out if any student has been reading. They will eat like now. They'll watch all the, the films, or what do, you, what do you call it, soapies, and then eat their loaf of bread. And then 9 o'clock, they want to read. And by midnight, this deadline. They'll be sleeping. In our day, we used to use candles. You know candles? The teacher will be suffering removing candle wax on our pages. Because instead of doing our homework during the day, we do it at night. So at home, they had an embargo. No homework at night. Because even the parents, they notice that we are burning their candles far too fast. While we had the whole sunlight, mercy. So we're going to pray. I want you to come before the Lord. I don't know what is it that has been stolen. What is it that you are struggling with? But the onus is on you to look at yourself and ask God's grace and God's favor. Am I doing somebody? God's grace and what? God's favor. So that... Uh, you are able to do much. Because when you receive grace and favor, you do more. Hallelujah. So we are going to deal with uh, the cases. Um, let me give you the lead.
Cases of disobedience. Let's go there. The book of Leviticus. 26, 14 to 46. We don't have the time to go through all. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Summary of it. Uh, what we are praying for is that God will lift you up. Hallelujah. When you get lifted up, you are above the floods. The Bible says when Satan comes in like a flood, the Lord does what? He lifts up the standard. So the prayer today is that God may lift up what? A standard. The turn of your heart so that you take the path that will bring exaltation upon your life. Hallelujah. And then we are going to pray as well for your health. One of the greatest wealth that you have is your health. So we're going to pray that God will help us that we be extremely productive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what do curses do? Humiliation. Humiliation is to struggle. To think far more than you are supposed. You get humiliated when you are supposed to eat. You have to think. I, I, I use... I was preaching one day and I said, you should guard against going to the shop and you want to eat lunch. And instead of eating what you want to eat, you look at the money in your hand. And then from there, the money tells you what to eat. Hey, I look good. Huh? You must decide, this is what I'm going to eat. And then, you look at your money. You even remember, I passed 10 cents when And still, after you put all the cents together, then the money tells you, I have, I have an X amount, so I can only eat. Spatlu is not a fashion. You get the idea? Do you understand? May the Lord help us. I was at the restaurant and I ordered, uh, anyway, I have a, a developed a taste for chicken livers. You know chicken livers? So somebody was saying, oh, you are ordering chicken livers. I said, that's what I decided I want to eat. So what I'm trying to say, it's not necessarily buying expensive food, but what you want to eat. Because what you want to eat will, will make you not to get fat. But what you are going to buy out of the money that is going to make you sick, I'm telling you the truth. The kind of food you are going to buy with the money, if you look at it and now you go to the shop, you are going to look what fits this, this profile. Mercy. Let's not go there. Humiliation. May the Lord deliver us from every humiliation. In the name of Jesus. Number two, failure to produce. The inability to produce. You have talents, gifts, abilities, but your talents and gifts are never given a chance to come out. I was saying to somebody, I've got more than ten gifts. Me, I have more than ten gifts. I was, I was listening to one, one song I wrote. I said, hey, I like the song. I wrote the song myself. I like it. You look at it and say, people cannot produce anything. I always get very frustrated with, with going to school and then you come back and say, I'm looking for a job. It's one part that frustrates me. Because if you can't think about things that advances you, it becomes really difficult. May the Lord make you to think outside the box in the name of Jesus. Hey. 
Yo. South Africans. Failure to do what? To reproduce. Humiliation is mental and physical illness. Con- uh, occurring, reoccurring mental and physical illness. Mercy. Family breakdown brings humi- humiliation. Family what? Yeah, family breakdown. If you come from a broken family, make the decision that in the event that you marry or you are married now, that you will not take that route. Are you listening? These things, they, they are like a, a rolling, continuous uh, pain. Poverty. Struggle just to survive. Poverty. Consistent defeat. You do things, but you end up being defeated. Oppression. At work, you can be oppressed. At home, you can be oppressed. Failure. You know, there is a failure that is a learning curve, but there is a failure that is really devastating. That failure that is devastating when it has happened, even people are afraid to help you. They withdraw. May the Lord have mercy. I think uh, let's every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, even tonight. We are grateful, Father, as we come into prayer. Lead, guide, and direct our course. Here we are sitting in your presence. We pray, Father, for your mercies. If you are here tonight, you say, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. Lift up your right hand and I'll pray together with you. I want to receive Jesus. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be a child of God. Is there somebody? I don't see anyone. Can we give a powerful clap offering to Jesus? Can we stand together, if you can stand? So we are going to come before the Lord. I've listed the number of things. These are not all. One thing I like about the Holy Spirit is that as we teach and preach, some things make sense to you. Not to everybody. They make sense to you. And therefore you say to God, I want this thing to come out. The example I used of our beloved sister here, possibly is... is only today she realized that she's advanced. She's the only one who has a house. The rest don't have. Some of us lack the appreciation. And because we lack appreciation, the help we have received, we will never have our own. Imagine somebody. Bitterness should not be part and parcel of your life. You must learn to celebrate others. To notice that for me to move forward, the issue that we're talking about, humiliation. Humiliation comes to all of us. And there are people who want to humiliate us because they have some things in their possession that they can use to cause harm and pain. May the Lord have mercy. So we're going to pray now that Lord help us that we may come out of humiliation, failure to reproduce, mental and physical illness. Mental and physical illness it's not the madness you think, a person picking paper on the street. It's a mental illness. It's just the inability to cooperate, to work together with others. To see yourself as the only one who can do the thing. No other person can. It has an element of mental. We are praying as well for uh, mental and physical illness. Family breakdown, poverty, defeat, oppression, failure, but mainly devastating failure, spectacular failure. And sometimes you have to look at all of this within the context of where you come from. Your family. 
I used the example yesterday for the students that if you are at the university and your mother or your father, they are still using their, their, their finger, their thumb, they're still crossing. You should know that you are still at the baseline. You have not moved as a family. You must be a second, third, fourth generation when you break away from, from illiteracy. And why we go to school? We don't go to school to find job. It's colonization that makes you to think, I must go to school, find job. Who are you going to work for? That's not the way we think. That's not the way you should think. The best thing is to look at it. I'm going to school to grow myself. Yes, you might need to learn the experience here and there. But from the beginning, you should have the desire to become your own person, to be free. So that you can fly. So that you can do what? You can enjoy what life is about. Your life should not be determined by the size of the house you stay in. It's the contentment you have. I might stay in one room, I'm fine. It's me. It's my place. You get it? What is the use to have a, a house you can't afford? I had a member who bought a three-bedroom house. I, I, I said, I have, I've been in that state where I bought three-bedroom house. And for a number of years, the other rooms we never visited. I don't know how many years. We never even went to the garden at the back. It's true. She's here. We had to do counseling for one young couple that were getting married. And we said to them, come to our house. I think it was after church. Come to our house. And it's then that we realized, I think after three or four years we bought the house, we said, oh, let's go and sit at the garden. We used to have a very nice garden with nice trees. And we realized that it's first time. We had a gardener who comes faithfully to, to do the garden. All the money went down the drain. Mercy. Okay, we are going to pray. So, if you can identify with any of the things we have spoken about, it was God's help, God's intervention. And there might be other things that we spoke about. Uh, you can come forward. Ashes, can you help us? There is a line here. You can't see it when you are far, but there is a line. You stand on the line. We'll pray together. And believe God for a change. Believe God for a breakthrough. Believe God for an intervention. Believe God to come through for us. Believe God for an assistance. Lord, send, send help from the sanctuary. Send me assistance. Lord, assist me. Let's create some space a bit. Don't touch the other person with your, with your elbows so that when we pray, there is a space in between yourself. I just help us, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that daily you set us free. Father, we thank you. You said to David, you will surely pursue. You will surely overtake. And you will recover all. Father, we thank you even this evening that we have a privilege and a joy. Yeah, if there's too many, we can come this way. We thank you, Father, for the privilege, the joy of salvation that you have brought towards us. Father, we come with thanksgiving, with adoration, that you are the Lord who saves. You said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That the blood of Jesus is able to save to the uttermost. Father, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray.